Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss fats and oils, the most expensive energy source in the ration and another major nutrient in the dairy ration. Let's begin by defining what fats and oils are. These nutrients contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a ratio of 6 to 12 to 1. Notice the ratio is much lower in oxygen, and this will be important a bit later. Fats are those products that are solid at room temperature. Examples would be tallow and grease. Oils, on the other hand, are liquid at room temperature. Examples would be corn or soy oil. When we look at the structure of fats and oils, they consist of a glycerol molecule and three fatty acids attached to that molecule. Depending on these types of fatty acids make the characteristic of that fat or oil. When we categorize fatty acids, we can do it two different ways. The first way is the length of the fatty acids, or how many carbons are contained in the molecule. A short chain fatty acid would be those molecules that contain 6 to 14 carbons linked together. A long chain fatty acid would consist primarily of 16, 18, 20, and 22 carbon atoms linked together. For dairy cattle, Long chain fatty acids are more desirable than short chain fatty acids because of its impact on rumen fermentation. The second way to categorize fatty acids is on the degree of unsaturation. A saturated fatty acid are basically those that have double bonds between the carbon molecules. Fatty acids can vary from one to four double bonds, which is that characteristic of that fatty acid, which makes it very healthy for us humans. For dairy cattle, Saturated fatty acids are more desirable than unsaturated fatty acids up to a point. If it is too saturated, they be decrease in digestibility. Energy density of oils and fats are much higher because they contain a lower ratio of oxygen compared to carbon due to its structure. Thus, the energy content of fats and oils are about two and a quarter times more energy dense, expressed as mcals per gram or fat of dry matter, due to its higher carbon level. Remember, carbon provides energy, regardless if it's in a cow's rumen or if it's in your furnace, compared to carbohydrates and protein sources. When fats and oils are digested in the dairy cow, the following things will happen. First, as they enter the rumen, the bacteria will break down the fats and oils to triglycerides to free fatty acids, or fatty acids, and will attempt to saturate the double bonds. That's why tallows are more saturated fats and are less healthy for us humans. Once it gets to the small intestine, these more saturated fatty acids and monoglycerides can then be absorbed across the intestinal lining, which are then transported in the blood as triglycerides. If there is too much triglyceride in the bloodstream, the cow will then store that excess as adipose tissue as triglycerides, and the cow gets fat. What are some of the benefits of fats and oils in the dairy cow ration? Well, immediately we know it is the most concentrated source of energy per unit of dry matter or per pound of dry matter. So animals that need that extra boost of energy will look at this as an energy resource. It may also improve palatability. For example, roasted soybeans are extremely palatable for dairy cattle. It may also reduce fines and dustiness in the ration. Dairy cattle and calves don't like fine feed, so it kind of holds a total ration together. Fourthly, once we have maxed out on the amount of starch and forages and grains we can feed, we can increase energy by going to a fat source. Fifthly, we can also increase reproductive performance, both because of the higher energy intake for the cow and the actual fatty acids themselves may enhance reproductive performance. And finally, we can also reduce metabolic and energy deficiencies and disorders such as ketosis by feeding extra fat and oils to lactating cows. Well, certainly besides all the advantages, there are limitations associated with fats and oils. The biggest one is actually their cost per unit of energy. We'll discuss this a bit later. Second of all, at very high levels, we can reduce total ration dry matter intake. Generally, values over 8% will have a negative effect on dry matter intake. It tells a cow to stop eating, and data would indicate in early lactation cows do not respond well to added fats and oils. We can also reduce fiber digestion in the rumen, especially if we're feeding unsaturated and unprotected fats and oils. And finally, fats and oils may be difficult to handle. For example, fuzzy cotton seed does not flow due to its physical characteristics, and if we want to pump 
fats, animal fats, it has to be heated to liquefy it before we can apply it to feeds or in the TMR. When we look at the economics of fats and oils, let's look at cost compared to other energy sources. Carbohydrates are typically 4 to 5 cents per mcal of net energy. However, fats and oils are 10 to 15 cents per mcal of net energy. When we compare different sources of fat or types of fats, vegetable oils in the Midwest are always the least expensive source of added and should be the first increment. Animal fat is about twice as expensive compared to oil. And finally, inert fat is about four times as expensive compared to oil. Finally, let's finish up talking about recommendations for fats and oils. The base ration normally will contain 2 to 3% fat or oil. This will come from such things as corn, forages, and other supplements. The next question is, when should we add fat to the ration? Generally, it is important for young calves that are rapidly growing and for cows producing over 70 pounds of milk because this about meets the amount of energy we can get from forages and grains. The first additional pound of fat should come from vegetable oil. This will be the cheapest. If cows still need more energy, meaning they are losing weight or producing high levels of milk, the second increment would be a half a pound of animal fat because of its cost and of its availability. Finally, if we still need some extra energy, the third increment would come from the inert fat, and this can vary from one half to one pound. So these are the strategies on how and when to feed fat. Well, this module discusses the importance of fat and oil in the dairy cow ration. Thanks, and have a good day.